Money will be tight once again this offseason, but there are some ways to try to free up a little cap space. We'll discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, Jaden Homuth joins us as we look at the state of the Wild's finances. Heading into the offseason, we'll look at the players that should be prioritized for extensions, who stays, who goes, and how the Wilds can free up a little more money to try to make some additional moves. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. As mentioned, Jaden Homuth, one of the OGs, joins us here on today's show. Jaden, how are you holding up first off? How are you holding up after the, uh, the loss to the Stars? Uh, you know, stay off Twitter, so I don't got to read what everyone's saying. <laughs> um, yeah, some crazy takes going on out there, but uh, I think, I don't know, the first, the first two weeks are pretty upsetting. I mean, especially, I mean, every we, we all expect it, right? We all expect the first round exit. We always, like, especially now, you just expect the worst, so you can never be disappointed. But every single year, we are disappointed. Um, I mean, you could have argued that this year's team was different than last year's. Obviously, last year's team was way better at scoring, a little worse at defense, and this year was the complete opposite. But I don't know, just same same thing. 2-1 series lead, 5-1 win in game three, lose three straight. So, Yeah, not, uh, not great. But we are – we're moving towards the offseason – and the theme all week has kind of been, where do we go from here? And that includes looking at some of the big decisions that will have to be made. Now, we did have the Marcus Johansson extension announced, two years, $4 million total, so $2 million per season. Before we dive into some of the other names that uh, the Wild should look at in the offseason, do you like the extension for Johansson? Uh, what, what do you think about that move to kind of kick off the off season? I like it. I think it's it's low risk, high reward. After we saw what he was able to do this year, um, if he can maintain about forty to fifty point pace at that range, that's well worth the value that we got him at. And that's really a that's I, I know it's not a bridge deal, but in like you could consider it's you could call it something like that because it leads into that year where we're completely free of cap. If he's still performing at a good age after these two years, he's a great idea for a third line forward when you bolster your top six with all that new cap space. So I think it's a good, safe move for a player that had an impact for us right after the deadline. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a guy that, that brings a level of familiarity. And, I mean, his performance this last time around, when he was healthy, was night and day to what he was doing the first time he was here. So and he's you get so like fast, <laughs> just, it's insanely fast. And so you get him for two million a year, and so it's not like a it's not a backbreaker move for everything else that has yet to happen here this off season. And it's a guy that you can slot in on that uh, that second line with Matt Boldy, and uh, that that's that's what you probably roll with to start the season, but. There, there are plenty of other moves that need to be made. And so why don't we start with obviously the biggest one, that being Philip Gustafson. And Gustafson was pretty, he, he was pretty nonchalant about the contract yeah. situation in his exit interview. He said, I just told my agent basically to, uh, to let me know when it's done. So he sounds like a guy that wants to come back here. He wants to stay here in Minnesota, but as has been reported nationally, there is a chance that another team tries to swoop in 
and offer sheet him and sign him to an amount of money that the wild are not able to uh to offer him and in that case then the wild would get a pick back it'd be a second round pick what's your concern level for that happening or do you ultimately think that uh, that Gustafson wants to at this point try to build off of this season with the wild a little bit before he maybe tests free agent uh, the free agent waters later yeah I, I mean that's obviously the worst nightmare for the Minnesota fans and I mean if you look at any history that could happen very that could very well likely happen um but I think that with Billy taking a chance on Gus when he was nowhere near a top 50 goaltender in the league last year, uh, someone like me, like I, I, I play college football, uh, when a school takes a chance on me, like when they lose a big guy and they pick me out of everyone, I, it tends to help me be loyal. And I think that Gus is kind of the same way. He's, I think he'll, I think he'll be back regardless because we traded our bona fide number one goaltender all last season, one for one, no picks, no nothing, just straight up, give us Gus, and he handed him the reins all through the playoffs. It's not like he had a bad game and he sat him for flurry the rest of the time. He didn't show no distrust in um, Gus. So I, I, if I'm Gus, I, this this team I want to play for. Obviously, I want to, like you said, I want to build off a very 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 strong year and I, I could see a bridge deal two years leading into the next or may, maybe next year i i could see a one-year deal to be honest with you um because we got him as a, he's a restricted free agent but obviously worst case scenario it was an offer sheet coming in from someone like the ducks who are probably going to get rid of john gibson this offseason and everyone knows teams like that can offer him more than we even have in cap space. So right, yeah, they they could offer if they want to get crazy, you could offer it to where you, there's not even a chance. Even if you make a couple of moves to free up additional money, it just yeah. So we hope that that isn't the case. Uh, Brett Marshall did some uh, some plotting of the uh, the potential for deals for uh for Gustafson and this was this was put together by Evolving Wild they were doing some contract projections and it looks as though the most likely scenario for Gustafson is a 2 year deal with a 3.88 uh AAV so you're in the neighborhood of a just under um just under 8 million for two years, which honestly, I, I can't really, I can't really say too much, not enough, because it feels like he deserves whatever amount of money he ends up getting here this, this year and beyond. Yeah. After this year, that seems like a massive underpayment. So <laughs> I don't, if we, if we can get him there, that's, I don't, I, I better not see anybody complaining <laughs> about that on Twitter or Facebook or nothing. That is, he put up, he was statistically top three in the like the entire season mm -hmm. behind the Bruins duo who fell apart in the playoffs. But I mean, I don't know. It's that getting them at two years, a million would be a massive underpayment. And I don't, I don't know. It, it's if I don't know. I, I love saying loyalty, but I don't say money talks. I say money whispers. And there's obviously I feel like. Uh, offer sheet is a very strong possibility from any team, especially taking advantage. Like any GM is going to want to take advantage of the cap situation that the Wild are having. Mm -hmm. um, and but I don't think Billy G is one to panic, um, as we saw with the Klingberg trade phone call. Like that was great. He doesn't he doesn't care. So I think I think Gus comes back. I think it'll be around. I think it'll be a two year deal, and whatever we get him for, there better not be no complaining because it's going to be way less than what he deserves. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see what the uh, we'll see what the pen to paper ends up looking like and uh, of course we'll break it down further when we get to that point. Now, Gustafson obviously the big fish 
of the off season, but there are plenty of other names to discuss. And so here's how we're going to finish out the show. We're going to just look at the rest of the names of the uh, impending unrestricted and restricted free agents. Do we want them to stay? Do we not want them to stay? And then we'll finish the show today by looking at all the players on this team that have no movement clauses or modified no movement clauses to see if there is a chance that any of those players end up getting dealt to free up some additional money. So a lot of looking at the roster and how it can be supplanted um, with some additional cap space. That's all coming up on today's episode of Locked on Wild. After a word from our sponsor, which for today's episode of Locked on Wild is Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. And that is none other than Built. You have got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices but don't want to compromise on taste, then Built Bars and Built Puffs are the best route to go. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. You wouldn't believe how healthy these are because, for one, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yeah, you heard me, 100% real chocolate. They also come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. Despite all of that, Built Bars contain just 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Best of all is you no longer need to wait for shipments to arrive at your door. You can head to your nearest Walmart or Sam's Club today, pick up a box, and if you really want to, you can eat them all before you get home. If you don't have a Walmart or Sam's Club nearby, don't worry. You can head to Built.com, but whichever way you choose, make sure that you choose Built Bar today. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, make sure you stick around for tomorrow's episode. We're going to have a little fun in uh, starting a series in which we look at some of the recent teams that have climbed all the way to the top of the mountain. How did they get there? What was their path to being able to achieve that ultimate goal? We're talking Tampa Bay Lightning. We're talking Colorado Avalanche. We'll even throw in the St. Louis Blues from a couple of years ago as well. We're just going to take a look at how a few teams have done it and see if there's a way that the Wilds can take some of the elements from those cup runs and apply them to their situation going forward. We are continuing today, though, to look at the Wild salary cap situation and seeing who needs to be retained, where some other money can be freed up. And so, Jaden, let's take a look at uh, the names that are going to be either uh, unrestricted or restricted free agents and whether or not we want them to stick around or if money is just going to preclude them from being uh, being retained. Let's start with Gustav Nyquist, who came in, looked good in the postseason, and uh, said that he'd be amenable to staying. Would you like to see Nyquist retained or is he going to be somebody that is probably going to get uh, more than we can afford on the open market? I think he's going to get more than we can afford on the open market. Um, but we were having a conversation before the show. And I think if you want to keep someone like Gus, who seemed to have more upside than some certain players, maybe you trade someone like Zuccarello, free up some cap space, give that money to not all of the money, but give most some money to Nyquist, keep him around. Um, he just, he, he was able to create offense all by himself. And that's something that Zuccarello can't do. Uh, Zuccarello has more turnovers than <laughs> I think any forward on the team, but Nyquist was able to just kind of cycle by himself in the corner with two guys on him and just allow everyone to get set. And I think that was something that, if, especially going to next year, if, if you expect to be struggling, you're going to want someone who can kind of carry your offense. Mm -hmm. So he's someone that I don't think will come back, but if you do need to bring someone back that you can't necessarily afford, I think he's the guy you try the hardest to bring back. He's the guy you move some money to be able to retain. That's yes. a good way. That's a good way to put that. Um, so we'll put Nyquist in that category. We go to Oscar Sunquist, who... Sunquist was a big body that was brought in. 
didn't play in most of the series. I think you could have found a way probably to get him in in game six, but um, we're we're talking about whether or not he should be retained or not. What do you think? Yeah, I don't I don't think he'll be retained. I think they'll move on from him. Uh, he he played. It's not like he played bad. He played he played good. He had I remember he had a big goal in the game against Boston. Uh, he had a, he had a big goal to close out the first period in game two, keep the game alive. He 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 has a good net front presence. He's not a physical big guy. Uh, he's on the slower side a little bit, but he's a he was a good slot in on that third line when we could use him. Uh, but I don't think I don't I don't know. He's not someone that you move money to keep, or he's not someone that you 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 put a check mark by his name because you need to keep him. He's he's just he's a good NHL player, but someone someone else will pick him up for slightly more than he was making this year, or just about even. And he's he's a good he's a good twelve thirteen goal year guy. Like, I don't think sure. I don't think he's someone you you move stuff around or you spend money on when you know you can spend it on someone else. Um, for what it's worth as well, evolving wild, uh, also took a look at, uh, the projected contracts. And again, Brett Marshall lays this out on Twitter pretty succinctly, nice and easy for me to, uh, to take a look at here as we're recording this episode. Um, he has Nyquist evolving wild has Nyquist getting a three-year deal for around 4.1 million per year. Sunquist getting a deal, a four-year deal worth about three just under 3.1 million per year. So if that's what it ends up being, you know, that, that tells you what you would need to do in order to make it happen. And um, I mean, if, if Nyquist ends up getting four, then yeah, like you point, like you pointed out, you're going to have to move a contract to do it. So, yeah. And I don't think Sunquist is not a guy you move. Sunquist is not a guy you put more money to than other people. Yeah, I think Nyquist is Dumba is, but yeah, I don't think I don't think Sunquist. I think they'll move on from him. Yeah, I I I agree. Uh, moving down the list, this is an interesting one. Ryan Reeves, Reeves has been vocal about wanting to stay here in Minnesota, but maybe wanting more than just a one year deal. Now, Evolving Wilds pegs him getting a two-year deal worth $1.04 million per year, so a low salary. But what what do you think about the possibility of Reeves returning? you got to keep him. I think that especially next year, the biggest year of the cap crunch, we're going to be a very young team. Uh, I feel like a lot of guys from Iowa are going to be up here. It's, it's, it's a big boy league, and – when you got a young team like that, you need someone that can kind of keep everything from getting too loose. Uh, you know, you got you got bully teams. You got you got Winnipeg. You got you got Boston. Uh, let's see, you got you got Toronto. You don't want it. You don't want. You need someone like Ryan Reeves around, and if you can get him for that cheap, and if he wants to stay for that cheap, you keep him around because he keeps your guys safe. Like there's, like next year, <laughs> we're gonna be a very young team, and. There yeah. shouldn't be a lot of expectations next year, but in order to keep games from getting too out of hand, Felino can't do it by himself. That's why Reeves came here. Um, you keep Reeves. I think out of all the guys that we traded for this year, the most important one for the next two years would probably be Reeves. Yeah, and it's it's not it's not a huge amount of money. And honestly, I would rather. So we we have the the angle of the young players that are are likely going to play a role on this team next year. And if Ryan Reeves playing is the difference between Marco Rossi being put into a fourth line role and being put higher in the lineup, sign me up. Like I don't I don't want to see that again this season where you you throw him in on the fourth line and you say, "Okay, go do your thing." Like I would rather if it's going to be, well, we're putting Reeves on the fourth line so that then Rossi plays higher in the lineup, like then do it. Mm-hmm. I also have to reiterate. Uh, I said all the trades this year, the next most important people. I don't want anyone to bash me. The most important trade behind Gus for Talbot. Sorry. 
I don't, don't want any. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want anyone to be like, <laughs> "What a dummy." <laughs> we knew, we knew what you meant. Um, yeah. So that's Reeves. Uh, we move to. Here's an interesting one, and we're we're gonna go through the rest of these before then talking about the no movement clauses uh, to finish off the show. Uh, Sam Steele, restricted, um, restricted free agent for this coming year. Do do you, do you think we see him get an extension, or or do you think we see? I, I really don't know with this one because. He had some moments, but he also had some moments where you look and you're like, yikes. Yeah, if anything saves him and puts him back on this team, it'll be his. It's almost like when he was when he knew he was on the team for good for like a good solid month or two. He was terrible to watch, but when he slotted in as that that healthy scratch, Mm -hmm. like He's a huge reason we beat Colorado on March 29th. Yeah. He's a huge reason we beat Dallas in game one. He he's he he played really, really well when he knew it could be his only game for that month. But when he was comfortable in the lineup and had a spot, it, it wasn't good to watch. So I don't it, it's that I don't know if they could dig out that full potential from him, but you gotta resign him and able to do that. So I don't I don't know. I would like him back. Just because, again, next year you're going to need as many experienced players as you can, and I think he's an experienced player who can put up 15 goals, if, if maybe 20. Um, I liked what I saw from him when he was a scratch. I didn't like what I saw from him at the beginning of the year when he was yeah. a mainstay. But and he's also a center that can slot in kind of whatever line you need him to, and he's a good depth player. So if you can, I'm sure no teams are going to offer sheet him if he's RFA, but I, but I think that. You could get him for pretty cheap, and and he knows that you, he could. I, he knows his value. He knows he's not that he's not that expensive, so he's not going to yeah. demand. He's not going to demand three million. He's so I, I think it's fifty fifty. It's a coin flip for Sam Steele. You you hit it. You brought up an interesting point. I think that's important though about the Sam Steele experience is he played way better as a player who was fighting for a job mm-hmm. than he did as a guy who had one. So if you can. You can channel a little bit of that um, and, and maybe look at him more as like a 13th forward. That's, that's probably not, that's probably not a bad route to go. I'd push him further down on the priorities list. Yeah. Uh, because of the next guy that we're going to talk about, because um, I just, I think there are other players that can give you more, but in terms of depth, it's, it's not a bad option depth wise. So, I, I would say if the price is right, go ahead and do it. Um, I'm not going to take no for an answer for this one. Brandon Duhame. He is a restricted free agent. I would imagine he would like to come back. And I think he's an important enough player that the Wild would like to have him back. So we are all on board with Brandon Duhame returning, correct? Listen, they said they're already resigning Shaw, right? If Shaw's getting resigned, Dewar's going to be here. If Dewar's here, Duhame's going to be here. That's all I got to say. Hey, yeah, end, end of story. End, <laughs> end of story. Of story. Like that's going to be our solidified fourth line for the next two years. And I think they're guys that don't care where they play; they just love playing with each other. Like mm-hmm. that's like the best bromance I've seen on any team. Like, I don't know those guys. Those guys are so funny to watch. And then. How could you not keep doing it? Like his, he's so fast and he's a game breaker when he, like when he chooses to be. Um, but like, I, there was so many big plays. Like the one that sticks in my mind the most is when Vegas had a two zero lead on us, and we did, we still lost the game, but we needed a goal. The fourth line goes out there and he picks up the puck to the left of Gustafson, flies by a forward, two defensemen, and shoots it right over Brassard's shoulder. Like I was like. You got you got to resign him, and he's someone that could. No, I don't. I don't think he'll get an offer sheet, but I. But he's. He's he's a really good checking forward, like one of like. Better than Tanner Janot or Jano or whatever, however you say his name. I, I mess Jano. up some of the names. Jano, Tanner Jano. Like when I when I saw what. Tampa paid for Jano. I was like. 
What? We should have sold yeah. Duhame. Like you like, better you better get like, two first for him if you're gonna trade him. Yeah, like he's he's a great checking for it, and I don't I don't think that there's any reason he would want to leave his two and his two best friends in the entire world are his line mates. Yeah. I I think he'll be back. And you touched on um you touched on Mason Shaw. I think um we talked about Gustafson. That is beyond the defenseman, which let's uh let's get a pause in and then we'll talk about the defenseman and then we'll talk about the no move clauses to finish off the show. Still a ton to get to on today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. We are your team every day. And for the everydayers, once again, a reminder that uh, we will be taking a look at how some of the recent cup champions have done it, how they've gotten to the top of the mountain, and what the Wild can pull from their runs to try to replicate. So, that's going to be starting tomorrow. We'll run that into next week. We've got a bunch of other long series that we will be doing, player evals. We're going to do a getting to know them series on the members of the Minnesota Wild. Uh, so uh, look forward to all of that here as we move throughout the offseason. Continuing with the restricted and unrestricted free agents. Uh, so let's move to the defenseman, Jaden. We'll talk about Matt Dumba to start. <sighs> Matt Dumba. Uh, I love that guy. Um, it's going to be hard seeing him, seeing him in another uniform. Um, and watch, he'll probably find his offensive prowess next year. He'll score 20 goals with wherever he's at. But um, I'm, I'm just expecting not to see him back in a wild uniform, even though I know how much he said, like, anything's possible and he loves it here. The only way that he would be able to play here is if he takes a very, very low contract and he yeah. knows his worth. The NHL knows his worth. Like, again, it's that cap situation. If I'm a GM for Ottawa, we need another defenseman. Uh, if I see Minnesota, if I hear Minnesota's offering him a million a year because he wants to stay, I'm throwing five million at him. He's worth that. In my mind, he's worth that. People can disagree with me. He played so well down the stretch um but who knows he 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 got rid of his town home he bought a house here brodeen is his best friend he started crying when he was talking about leaving brodeen um and i know favor is supposed to be the new brodeen partner but if if dumbo really really wants to stay here and he did just forgets his worth money wise and stays i think we maintain one of the best defensive cores in the league because you go out and you just get a vet a vet to play with or you just throw Goligoski on the line with Faber and you still got the almost identical tops like top six defense than we had this mm -hmm. year so yeah it's I think both team both sides kind of want to try to make it work but I just it's think just, how he, yeah how he played the last like two month or two of the season especially in the postseason um, he got that physical part of his game back. He was throwing his body around with reckless abandon almost. And there's going to be a team that took note of how he played and said, we can replicate, we can harness that. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's going to get, you know, he's going to get right in line, maybe more with what he is, um, is pegged to uh, to be getting, which is based off of Evolving Wild. They say he his contract projection is a six year deal worth six point two million per. Which... Yeah, he's I, he deserves it. I don't know. He's and it's not only off on the ice, off the ice. He's he's just a great he's a great locker room guy. Like I I'd, mm -hmm. I'd wanted to be teammates with him, and um, it, it's kind of a lose lose situation for him, you know, because if he if he kept playing the way that he got crapped on for, there's no way BG even thinks of resigning him. Like he's just get out of here. Right. Yeah. But then, he, but then he, just... but then he, but then he plays really good, and he raises his stock, and we still can't afford him. So no matter what, it was just yeah, it wasn't it was it wasn't gonna work. It just wasn't because he I don't know. It's it's it sucks. 
no, it's you're right on. It's it's if he if he just continues to have the season he had to start the year, we're not having this conversation. But then he doesn't, and now yeah, we're and I took and I and I got screenshots. I took notes of all the people who were. Why are we keeping Dumba? Fiala was way better. First of all, couldn't keep Fiala. No way possible. Never would have happened. Second, those same people are like, we got to find a way to keep Dumba. We need Dumba. We need Dumba. So I don't know. It's just he's faced so much criticism and just smiled through it all. Yeah. Like, ever since the bubble, it just smiled through it all. And he's it hasn't affected his game, but he got better under the criticism. So I don't know. He's. I don't know. He'd be a great. I want him to stay, but I don't think it's going to happen. John Klingberg, another guy, was traded for and brought in as one of those veteran acquisitions. Evolving Wild projects him to get five point six one million over four years. I think with the fact that Brock Faber is is set to take one of those spots on the decor, and with still at this point having John Merrill and Alex Goligoski. I'm leaning no. Do you think we see Klingberg back? No, he's too expensive. And he's we have if we we have a power play guy if we don't trade Addison and if he wants to learn and if you see where I'm going. Addison's an if guy, but like mm -hmm. Klingberg is he's gone. He's he was he was a good rental. He he played well down the stretch. He He's amazing at walking the line, um, but it's 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 gonna suck to see him go because I I enjoyed seeing him in a wild jersey. I didn't I didn't agree with a lot of the hate that he got, um, but yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna go. He'll get a, a a contender team will want him on their blue line for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, final one before we get to the no move guys, Kalen Addison, and my opinion on this has changed. Since Bill Guerin's season-ending presser, do you think Kalen Addison is back next year? I think he is. Uh, I know I said like there's a possibility he could get traded. I don't think he does, but um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. If I was an insider, I would maybe know a little bit more. But it's just he's he's so he's such a wild card because you take a chance, you sign him to a two-year deal. And he just keeps doing what he's doing. They never play him, and he just wasted some money there. Um, but he also he reminds me of like a Scott Perunovich, like really short guy who skates so unbelievably well, and his shot from the point is a laser. Mm -hmm. And he's really good at that, but he's not good at defense. And if you're going to be a defender, you need to be good at defense, right? So I don't know. That's why I thought I made the joke. When he played right wing in the last game against Nashville, I was like, finally, somewhere he'll fit. But it just – he, I'd love if he could stay and play. He's he's a great power – he's a great power play guy. Like, and yeah. it's he, – he was leading rookies, and he, he was – he's so good on the power play. Like, it's it's not it's not, a, it's not a hidden fact or it's not just people talking. Like, it's proven that he's – he could be the future leader of this power play for a long time. He just needs to learn how to commit to defense. And I, my, my stance changed because the comments that Bill Guerin made about him and Marco Rossi made it seem like they were still part of the long-term plan, which they should be. Yeah. Um, and so it seems like from what Guerin said that they are going to keep him around to work him into those plans. And so my stance, you know, at the time in which he ended up being mostly a, a healthy scratch, I was leaning towards, yeah, he might be traded. But now, having heard those comments, I, I think I'm leaning towards he's going to be here. And so um, so that will get factored in as well. And I think what does Evolving Wild have for uh, for Addison? Uh, a two-year deal with $1.42 right around there for an AAV. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaden, to wrap up, there are some guys on this team right now that may not be here. When the season starts, you've got the two defensemen in John Merrill and Alex Goligoski who are signed but could be moved. And you've also got the guys with no movement clauses, Matt Zuccarello, Jared Spurgeon, Jonas Brodeen. 
I will mention that Mark Andre Fleury has one. It seems highly unlikely that he would be moved. But do you think of those guys of Zuccarello, Brodine, Spurgeon, Merrill, Goligoski, who do you think is most likely to be moved if Bill Guerin says, hey, we want to free up some additional cap space? I think the guy that is most likely to be moved with a no move clause is Zuccarello. Um, Brodeen is not going anywhere. Spurgeon is not going anywhere. Um, Flurry is not going anywhere. I think Zuccarello, and I know everyone's like, oh no, what's going to happen to Kaprizov? Zuccarello's old. He's going to leave soon, anyways. So just pull the dagger out now. Just get it over with. Kirill, if you want to be a $9 million player, if you want to be someone who's going to demand $12 million on his next contract, you need to learn how to produce. You, you, McDavid's pretty good at producing by himself. You don't need this guy, you don't need your best friend to be on your line with you. Um, I know it'll maybe piss him off, but it's not like it's not like he's gonna go somewhere else where you think Kirill wants to follow him. Zuccarello's old. He's 35 now. He's gonna be he's gonna be done soon. He's not gonna go to another team and play for another six years. So he, he takes up a lot of money. He does produce for us. His his numbers were great this year. He fell off when Kaprizov was gone. Um, if you want to keep a guy like Dumba cheap or like yeah, cheap for what he's worth or Nyquist, you get rid of Zuccarello. Yeah, I think um, I think the hierarchy, Merrill Goligoski, because those guys can be moved without a no trade. Yeah. Um, actually, see, it says no. cap friendly says that uh, goal or no, there it is. He's got the uh, he's got the no move clause. So you'd have to ask Goligoski to move. So John Merrill is probably the most likely because he doesn't have any of that. And I don't even know why we signed. I, I was that I was driving home when we signed him to that extension, and I was like, I looked at my phone, and I was like, "Why?" Honestly, <laughs> why? I think <laughs> I think Merrill was signed to be some defense insurance, but obviously, with what we saw from Brock Faber, he's going to play from mm-hmm. day one next year, and so his necessity is probably lesser so. Um, especially because you've got some other guys in the pipeline that could be like third line defensemen slash seventh defenseman, uh, if absolutely needed. So yeah. we'll uh, we'll see. There are a lot of questions to uh, to answer, and hopefully we kind of got things started with a look at uh, at the potential signings or not, and potential trades or not. Uh, that will do it for today's episode of Lockdown Wild. So once again, if you are a first-time listener to the show, we thank you for tuning in, and we hope that you continue to make Lockdown Wild a part of your daily listening plans. Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcast platforms to stay up to date on all things Minnesota Wild news and notes. If you're an everydayer, we have plenty of them, and we are adding to that mix on a daily basis. Thank you for sticking with us. And uh, we invite you to continue to check out the newest episodes of Locked and Wild as we maneuver through the off season. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.